I'm Anna Gray and I'm going to be talking about um, what we have digitised and what's available on the web website and what we've done over the past 12 months. So I'm going to start with some just general information about the collection, which some of you may already know, but I thought it's good just to have some background. So formats in the New South Wales State Archives collection include documents, manuscripts and files, bound volumes, maps and plans, audio visual formats, including films, cassettes, videos, magnetic audio reels, photographic formats such as photographs, slides, transparencies, glass plates and acetate negatives. And also we also accept born digital archives, of course, into the collection these days. So all of these formats have been digitised within the collection, obviously not all of them, but we don't limit the kind of material that we digitise. So it's a vast collection. We have over 14 million items at the last valuation count in the State Archives collection. In the past 12 months, over 196,000 digital entities have been added to um, the catalogue in our BAU or business as usual digitisation work and over 210,000 digital entities have been added to a special digitisation project with which we have had running over the past 12 months. Digitisation is an important part of our business as usual work at State Archives. So we always are doing digitisation here. It's guided by a digitisation policy. We develop an annual digitisation plan so we can have structure around what we're planning to digitise. All formats are generally digitised to recognise preservation standards and we use both internal digitisation services, so our commercial side, the Government Records Repository, does some digitisation for us. And we also use external vendors to digitise material, especially when the formats are unique, such as audiovisual material, which may require specialised playback machines. In addition to our BAU stuff, we also undertake specialised projects when we get funding to do such things, which we did over the past 12 months. But these are usually a huge undertaking, which involve increased staff levels and resources for the length of the project. So why are we digitising the collection? So we want to enhance both access and preserve the collection. Enhancing access to the collection so more people from more places can, can view it and extend our audience. We want to increase staff efficiency so we don't have to go and access the original item necessarily on the shelf and to meet public expectations. So more and more people are expecting digital, digital content on our website and we're trying to fulfil those expectations. We also digitise for preservation purposes. So we want to preserve the original archive through the access to a surrogate digital copy. This can prevent loss of information so that we're not accessing the original constantly. It can provide a conservation record so we can see what a record looks like at a particular moment in time and compare it over time. And we can mitigate format obsolescence. So for those formats that are becoming impossible to play or to access, we can digitise them and ensure that we can view them in the future. So digitisation of fragile physical archives is a recognised means of preserving at-risk assets. So there's two main reasons why a record may deteriorate, and that's through chemical degradation of the physical medium, that is the item itself, starts to break down and or technological obsolescence. So the equipment needed to read the format has become outdated and increasingly hard to access. So the types of at-risk material we hold in our collection are acetate negatives, film, cassettes, magnetic audio reels, video formats and computer media. So in the past we've had um, a large project to digitise some of these audiovisual materials and this time around the recent project we've been doing um, we focused on acetate negatives, which is one of our most at-risk collections, but we hadn't really done any large-scale digitisation of that format before. So why are acetates at risk? The main reason is um, vinegar syndrome. So vinegar syndrome is something that affects um, cellulose acetate film. And what happens is as they age and deteriorate, they produce acetic acid, which is detectable by a characteristic vinegar odour hence the name vinegar syndrome, and it causes the film to shrink and the images to become difficult to read. Both nitrate and acetate based negatives are prone to deterioration of both the image and base layer. This deterioration can be slowed significantly if the negatives are stored at a low temperature and relative humidity, but the only other practical way to preserve the images and make them accessible is to digitise them. The large scale digitisation project that's been undertaken over the last financial year is called the SCARP project. This stands for Stimulus Capital at Risk Preservation. So it was capital money that we were um, provided to undertake digitisation. 
we use both external and internal vendors to digitise this material and we had a large number of temporary staff employed to create metadata and upload the collection to the digitised material to our collection management system and make it available online. A huge number of acetate and glass plate negatives were digitised during this project as well as a selection of paper-based records. So I'm just going to go through some of these now. So firstly, we have GPO glass plate negatives, NRS 4481. These were photographs taken by officers at the GPO, Government Printing Office, during the years 1817 to 1920. So this is, if you search this particular consignment, consignment four was the one that was um, digitised. So if you search that in our catalogue system, you'll get a list of items that were digitised and have been uploaded. So you can see there you get the title and you get the thumbnail. So you can click on that item and you can go in and view the item itself. So the photographs cover a wide variety of subjects, including public buildings, railways and tramways, street scenes, harbour views. There's images of Sydney University, um, groups of people on the streets, um, ships and public occasions, botanic gardens, military camps, wharves, all sorts of things. So here are some examples in this series. So we have Burrenjack Dam being constructed, the Argyle Cut also being constructed, Windmill Street in the Rocks, and you can see the Hero of Waterloo Pub, which still stands, and celebrations for the Prince of Wales Address, peace decorations that were done in the streets of Sydney. And there's also even surprisingly a few photos of Melbourne amongst these, which is quite unusual. I believe these might have been taken because there was the Centennial International Exhibition which took place in Melbourne. So obviously some GPO staff were lucky enough to go down to Melbourne and they could take some photographs down there as well. Other things that this series contain, other examples. So these are pictures of damage, I think, done to uh, buildings due to work carried out by government agencies. So whether it's tunnelling to create railways or whatever it was, they've got the government employees have gone in and documented these problems that have been called out by individuals. And these are examples from the Department of Agriculture. So there was obviously an experiment or a process looking at uh, corn and the comparison of different corn varieties done by the Department of Agriculture. There was also a fungicide experiment in Cowra done, and this is a photograph from that process. And then the third one is a picture from a field day at the Bathurst Experiment Farm, which is run by the Department of Agriculture. So there's quite a variety of things in this collection. So the next series, another glass plate series, is NRS 9856 from the Maritime, Maritime Services Board. So there's around 4,641 negatives um, in this series digitised. And again, if you put that series number into the collection search bar, you can get a list of the series. And you'll see on the side there, when it says availability, you'll see that there's a number of items given and the number of those that are digitally available. So for this, in this particular instance, it's 4,536, which is not what I've got in my slide, but there you go. So this series of negatives shows the construction of wharves and adjoining facilities in Sydney Harbour. Ferry wharves, passenger amenities, views of Port Jackson, various different sorts of ships and vessels, um, diagrams of technical systems, buildings around the harbour, including warehouses and boat sheds, road construction, reclamation works. So anything that do, anything really that documented the maritime services work. So here's some examples. There's Manly Wharf under construction over there, a picture of Circular Quay, machinery at Woolloomooloo, Woolloomooloo Wharf, and then there's a shot of Benelong Point. This series also includes an interesting little collection of lantern slides as well. So these are three examples of some lantern slides within that collection. So these really are precursors to your usual, you know, 70s or 80s style acetate slide and even, I suppose, to the PowerPoint presentation. So these were a method of presenting visual information during a talk or information session and used a magic lantern to project the slide. So they're kind of an interesting precursor kind of to what we're doing right now. So there's a whole bunch of acetate negative series that were digitised and I've just listed them uh, in, in this slide. So we have acetate negatives that relate to public relations from State Rail, negatives of plans of ships and plant built at the Newcastle State Dockyard, acetate negatives again from State Rail, negatives from the Electricity Commission, acetate negatives with an H prefix from State Rail, more um, dockyard, state dockyard, Newcastle acetate negatives, and more state rail negatives with an S or signals branch prefix. Now, the way that we determined which 
which acetate negatives got digitised was through a process that our conservation department undertook and they measured the level of deterioration within each series of acetates and um, graded them for us so we could note which ones were most at risk as compared to those in the best condition. And so what this project focused on was looking at those ones that were deemed to be the most at risk collections and these are the ones that were digitised. So I'll just go through, through some of these series so you can see the kind of things that are in them. So these are the PR or public relations negatives from State Rail. These are quite a variety of images. They were generally used to promote the railway and rail travel and were generally, are generally from the post-war period. So some of these had already been digitised but the remainder, remainder of this series was digitised through this project. They show kind of aspects of the State Rail, what, what they did. So we've got an architect image down there on the left hand side and then we have a parcel handler. We've got catering staff being trained on the train there and processes um, that State Rail undertook, so loading meat from the Cogra meat factory there. And then there was also promotional um, images, so that one on the top uh, right hand corner is a promotional image for the Brisbane Express. And also included in this series are things or events that State Rail undertook or did. And every year it seemed they had a salaried officers picnic and they would have little events for their staff. And they also had a beauty pageant and you get a lot of bathing beauty pictures within this series, which was a bit of a surprise as well. Okay, so the next series, another State Rail, sticking with the rail. This is photographic negatives dating from 1944 to 1989 that were taken by the photographic section of the State Rail Authority. So they mainly relate to various aspects of railway administration, traffic, way and works, mechanical and signals, electrical. There are also negatives which relate to buses, trams and ferries within this, within this series as well. So this, this is generally strip negatives and you can see the items there will have, a, will have one item and then we'll have a, a number of negatives that relate to that that item title. So they'll probably be within a, a strip negative. So it kind of this reflects the original arrangement of the series where there's multiple photos that have been taken together by the agency to produce a demonstration of the same issue or theme. So the three I've got here, um, they're all related to the Eastern Suburbs Railway completion or process of construction. We've got Brushcutters Bay to Edgecliff, and then we've got the Eastern Suburbs Railway Progress in, the, in Redfern, the Domain, Central and Town Hall. And then for some light relief and colour, we've got Redfern Station, its completion there in, I don't know if we've got a date for that one, or if it is, it's wrong, it says 1908, which is clearly it's not. Yes, yeah, so anyway, it's good to see some, some colour. And each of these thumbnails can be clicked on and you can view the full, full um, image for each of these. Okay, so the next one I'm looking at is negatives from the Electricity Commission of New South Wales. So this collection comprises photographic black and white as well as colour negatives and transparencies. The series was created to record the power generation and transmission of assets of the organisation and to record the working conditions and also the social events of the organisation. So there's over 80,000 negatives that have been digitised in this collection and a lot of them are similar to the previous example where you've got strip negatives. So you'll have one item in the catalogue and you'll click on that item and you'll see that there are multiple images attached to that one, one item. So we have, for example, the Sydney West Live Line Training School. These are all images related to that event. So you click on each of those thumbnails and you can view the full image. And similarly, the float in Newcastle, so that's an event that obviously happened in Newcastle in 1965. Click on each of the images and you can see the full, full picture. And then in the centre there, there is just a picture of a Broken Hill power station. So an equipment room there. And an example of one of the social events that they talked about, which is the sports and social ball at Sky Lounge. Okay, so in addition to negatives that were digitised, there are also some paper records done and they, one of the series was school files. So in this, this portion of the series it was voted on by the public as to which schools were going to be targeted. The list on the right hand side there lists the schools that have had files digitised and there are around 198 files from 35 schools across New South Wales that were digitised. These files detail the establishment and upkeep of public schools. 
So unlike the other material that we've been looking at, these have been uploaded as a PDF. So you download the PDF in order to view it. So you'll see a little thumbnail that says PDF, you go into the item, and often because the files are quite large, we've had to divide them into separate PDFs to make the download um, more easy and quicker. So you download the PDF and then on the right hand side there you can see the kind of view you get and the kind of images that are within that series. So a single file, yes, will be broken up into several PDFs in order to make download quicker. This is an example of that where we've got one file for Asquith Public School, but we've had to cut it up into six separate PDFs, which can be viewed by clicking each file. The other paper-based series that was digitised by the SCARP project were the insolvency files, which date from 1842 to 1887. There were 239 boxes within this series that were deemed as at risk and unable to be issued because of their poor condition. So these were the boxes that were in scope for this project and were digitised and made available online. Previously, we couldn't even issue them to the public physically. So our conservation team did a lot of good work on these and have made them stable enough to be digitised and they can now be viewed online. Now I'm going to go into a few of the things that were digitised through our normal BAU work over the past 12 months. So BAU work, when, with their business as usual digitisation works closely with our volunteers and they've done a lot of work over the past year creating item lists and doing data entry to help us achieve the results we have. So the first one that we're going to look at is the new index, uh, INX 105, which is the Dependent Children's Registers from NRS 13358. So these records relate to children who were admitted to state care between 1883 and 1923. They record where the dependent children were placed, whether with foster parents or guardians. And some of these children, it looks, uh, you could tell that they were eventually adopted by these carers. So there are around 28,910 entries in this, in this index, all with corresponding digital images. So that screenshot is a picture of the um, front page of that index and you'll see a little search box up there and you can search for the name of the individual you're interested in or the parent's name and that should bring you to this index shot here. So you can, again, this is in PDF format again, you download the PDF and you can see the page related to that child it lists the particulars of the foster parent or guardian, and then also um, any maintenance that was paid on behalf of that child. Um, another child-related index that we did last year was INEX 103, which is the maintenance registers from NRS 3415. These registers date from, uh, well, were produced by the Metropolitan Children's Court, whose role it was to hear and determine cases of offences committed by or against children. The maintenance registers date from 1915 to 1917 and they record the case, the magistrate, the court and the amount of maintenance per week um, that, each, that the children were deemed to get and signatures of who, who's paying maintenance. Okay, and the third index we did last year, which is a rather large and involved project, was um, INX 99, the Index of the Colonial Secretary's Papers. So this is the index that we've had um, that was created by State Archives around 1988, I'm hoping that's right, um, and has been online for quite a while. But this is the first time we've, we've transformed that index and made it accessible via our um, normal catalogue system. So we had to export it from its original format and structure so it could be loaded into our current collection management system. And that was no easy feat to getting it from one to the other. We then got some assistance from Ancestry.com who had a few years ago um, digitised our microfilm and they helped us map the images to our existing index. There are over 144,000 images attached to the index, uh, which the index is arranged by surname and subject. And it's probably the most comprehensive index of early New South Wales settlement. It's a very valuable source of information on all aspects of the colony and New South Wales for the period of 1788 to 1825. So as I said, it, it, it is um, digitised microfilm. Again, you've got a search box like the other indexes, you can put your search term or name in there and you should get a result. So if I put, I put the search term canoes in and this is one of the pages I got as a result of that. I just quite like this one because you do get a little bit of a, a picture of canoes on, on this page. Alan Cunningham's journals and correspondence. So the 
microfilm does vary in its quality. This is, a, this is quite a good one, but some of them are a little bit uh, more difficult to read. Another project that was done as part of business as usual last year uh, were the staff record cards from Public Works, NRS 12535. This is a series of cards for staff of the Public Works Department, which include surname, name, date of birth, date of service, wages and leave. So they're arranged by alphabetic order and they can be searched by name. So for example, I put the series number and the surname Gray in and I got the following results in the table there. Again, you can see over here um, for the name Gray in that series, you get 26 items within that series and 26 of which are digitally available. Overall in that series though, we've got 17,930 images available in total. And so this is what you, it looks like when you click on one of those items, you have the various cards related to that single person and you click on each of them and you can view each card, the back and front of each card. And finally, um, NRS122, large stock brand registration cards is the other project that we completed or is ongoing actually, um, but the majority of that is up and available to view online. So these are cards relating to the registration of stock brands in New South Wales. They're from the Department of Agriculture. Uh, they're all cancelled cards, so they're brands that have been um, cancelled. The cards are arranged alphabetically according to the name of the owner of the brand. So here's another example of those. You get the name of the owner, you get where the farm is and the post town that that sits in and their application number. And often you also get the actual brand, a little diagram, you can see the YZ there, that would be the brand that they have registered for that particular farm.